Hey everybody, I'm Mark Christ. You probably recognize me from Detroit Muscle. Tommy and I have had over five great seasons there together. We built everything from vintage resto mods to late model muscle and everything in between. But I've got some truck builds that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Just so happens, so does a good friend of mine. His name's Brandon Burke, and he's the newest member of the Power Nation family. Buckle up, y'all. This is Music City Trucks. So, so let's talk about this season. So we've got a lot of cool builds planned. We'll get into all those now, but we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna make a lot of noise. Uh, yeah, as long as we have fun and build cool stuff, yeah. I think we hit the goal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I, I, I really wanna build stuff that either everyone can build or everyone wants to build or dream builds. You know, I wanna, I wanna hit the whole spectrum of what we're gonna do on the show. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm all about it. So budget builds on up to a full dream build, right? Yep, yeah. Speaking of budget builds. This uh, one? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do with it? My idea for it is the ultimate camping rig. Okay. Off-road camping rig, which means that you can take all of your buddies and all your gear anywhere, whether it's on the mountain, in the mud, or just regular trails, but everybody you want to fit inside this thing yeah can come have fun okay. do the whole weekend and come back okay and it this thing not to break uh so the plan the plan here to kick this build off what like what are we going to do today where are we headed we're headed to a uh, adventure off-road park aop and we're going to hit mud hit the trails and go up rocks hopefully this is a long truck okay. so <laughs> the rock thing might not happen we're at Adventure Off-Road Park in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. I love this place. This thing's got over 500 acres to choose from, 120 different trails, everything from easy to extreme rock bouncer type stuff. Yeah, plus they have over 20 events here every year, and thankfully they saved a little bit of time for us to come in here and check out our rigs, and that's just what we're gonna do with our Suburban today. See what it can do. Yep. And you're driving. All right, lock it up. Thought it was lock them in. Eh, same difference. <laughs> All right, here it goes. <laughs> it's already making some <laughs> funny noises. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Where's my, where's my keys? All right. I don't know if this was a good decision. Yeah, it definitely doesn't want to stay in four. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful up here. Don't mind me, just holding it in for. <laughs> oh, this is oh, cute. This thing is just awesome. <laughs> Stay left, man. Oh, this is a little, a little more treacherous. Oh. Oh, hang on, hang on. Your right rear's not spinning. Back up and try it again. Did you say this had a locker in it? It did. Okay. <laughs> okay. Try it again. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, it's spinning now. Oh, you're gonna have to give it a little, a little more stank than that. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> All right, let's see if we could do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, try again. Try to avoid that one. I'm trying to get her over the... Okay. This thing. Man, this is like Mr. Toad's wild ride. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Stalled again? Yeah. Okay. 
Oh. Might have broke it. <laughs> I think we broke it. Okay. We'll see what's going on. Pump it and crank it. Crank it and pump it. No fuel. Well, we broke it, just not in the way we wanted to. This is not how I wanted to end the day. Make engine noises, Brandon. It's a little bit of a quieter ride than it was earlier. Yeah. You doing all right over there, buddy? Oh, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> this is no joke. Oh, no, this is a, look at this steering wheel. <laughs> this is a, if the steering wheel comes off, <laughs> we're going to leave this project and <laughs> leave it here. Well, this day didn't really end the way that we wanted it to. This is, this is what happens when you go out trail riding, especially when the rig's untested. Uh, sometimes it breaks. <laughs> Up next, we evaluate our Suburban and set the stage for turning this vintage square body into a beast. All right, well, this is the moment of truth. Well, our poor Suburban didn't make it back here under its own power, but we got it back here on the hook. It's on the lift and it looks good in here. And it looks good in here. Hey, dude, I'm not an interior designer, but I think I did a pretty good job with this thing. D don't quit your day job just yet. <laughs> right. Speaking of your day job, let's talk about the project. Yeah, I think we need to stick with the name that I said at the park, Unbreakable. So, Project Unbreakable. You're putting that stamp on there. That is a <laughs> tall order. No, I mean, especially for something this big, I mean, that, that's going to require axles, suspension, engine trans, the whole works. Yeah, so any moving part either has to be replaced or rebuilt. Probably replaced. <laughs> Probably. Let's start under the hood. Throttle body 350, 185 horsepower of fury. <laughs> yeah, it's not really anything to write home about in the power level, but they are reliable. And in fact, so reliable, this is probably the original engine that came in this truck 30 years ago. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. I mean, these things are stout and they seem to never die if you treat them right. Except we don't know the history. We don't know the maintenance history. We don't know what's going on inside there or how many miles are on it. And like you mentioned, the power level. I say this thing's got to go. Yeah, and I think we build a small block and keep this truck small block. Like it. All right, you want to see what's underneath? Suburbans aren't really known for being the first pick for off-roading, but with the right components, can be plenty capable. Well, I noticed the rockers are kind of rusty, but other than that, it seems like a solid truck under here. Now, I think this is the perfect starting point for what we're trying to build but I am gonna pick it apart. Okay, <laughs> all right. 10 bolt front axle, which is known for breaking pretty much every component inside it. Right. The 350 we already mentioned. Yeah, um, I noticed the 700 R4, looks like it's been rebuilt at some point, so we might actually be able to salvage that. Yeah, we might be able to, that might be the only thing we keep. Okay. <laughs> 208 aluminum transfer case, chain driven, again, not really off-road worthy for what we're trying to do. I noticed under here too, the wires for the fuel pump. I mean, they look like they're either chewed up or got pinched and I can actually see the copper inside. Oh yeah. Let's not talk about the uh, slip yoke that's gonna fall out of the tail shaft. Yep. And these nice welded on caps for the U-joint. Nice work. <laughs> the one wheel wonder 10 bolt. Yeah. <laughs> Block style lift. And the worst part about this truck, especially for safety, is this tight brake hose you can play like a banjo. Wow. I mean, that's that's your only safety device on this truck. Yeah, so so bottom line, everything we're talking about has to just come out. All of it. All right, <laughs> let's get some tools. Besides having the wheelbase of a school bus, everything under here is half-ton Chevy, whether you're talking about K5 Blazers or K10 pickups. All right, you want me to hold the front? Yeah, if you would, I gotta get it off this flange here. Oh, sorry, dude. The funny bone. Was it funny? Not really. I got it. Good? Yep. Unbolting the transfer case, and uh, I'm gonna get that out of the way so we can get the engine trans out. The easy way. Yeah, you ready? Perfect. 
All right, we catch it because I'm going to come back. Actually, you probably go all the way back. Oh, uh, yeah, it? there's lots of room. That sounds nice. Awesome noise. Dude, a country graham cracker. No. Oh. <laughs> Put some milk on it first or some honey. <laughs> oh, there it is. as heavy as I thought it was gonna be. This may look like we're taking the long way around to get the engine out. Woo! Yeah, that's never been off. Nope. But it's much easier and cleaner to just remove the front clip. That did it. Woo! Well, as long as you don't have a bunch of rusty bolts to fight with. There's multiple ways to lift this front clip, but this is gonna be the easiest way for Oh, this is, this is the most fun way. Yes. Yeah, I'm good on this side. Oh, nice. Sweet. Engine mount, trans mount, all the wiring. Maybe a hoses, couple of vacuum lines. hoses. I mean, uh, power steering hoses. Power steering. Let me get those. Oh, oh that was oh. slick. Still good with me. Oh, there we go. I didn't want it to come out. Go up. Yep. Not bad for a day's work, huh? Nah. Oh, it's been rebuilt. Oh, yeah. Someone's rode on it on the transmission. We were wrong about the engine, too. There's a tag on it. Oh. All right, so now all that's left is to get the engine and transmission separated, get this thing on an engine stand, and take it to the boys down in engine power so they can get it rebuilt for us. Yep, hopefully. Stroker motor. I'm ready. Yes. Coming up, we finish the teardown on Project Unbreakable. Woo! Now we're talking. As far as I'm concerned, if you got the front clip off, you're living right. That's gone, so is the engine, transmission, and transfer case, and we mentioned earlier, the 10 bolts have to go, but we're not just gonna drop the axles. We're also gonna be dropping these leaf springs, and those leaf springs are never gonna come back on this truck because we're gonna replace it with something with more flex, more capability off-road, but before we can get to all that, we gotta get the rest of this truck torn down. Whether or not you're reusing your old parts will dictate your method of removal. For us, this stuff is all headed to the scrap bin. She hot. Mm-hmm. Ready? Hammer time. Clear? Almost there. Nothing holding this thing in, but some tension, some gravity. <laughs> How do you want to get this thing down? Let's put the wheels on it and lower the truck down, and it should just roll out of this That's thing. That's boring. Another benefit to having these old wheels and tires attached to the axle is the time it saves getting them out of our hair. I'm there. We're gonna we're gonna leave this front axle set up on the ground, and this truck's gonna move away vertically. Yes. You just hitting the power band. Why'd you get out of it? <laughs> All right. There you go.
Dude. That thing is in there. Now that we're done with the front, it's time to tackle the back. Whew. Hanging a little on that side. Yeah. Do what? Here. Hanging a little on that driver's side. Woo! Hopefully now we're talking. A little warm. Yeah. We're getting down to the nitty gritty yeah. here. Up next, playtime's over. This is Music City Trucks, and we're finishing the teardown of Project Unbreakable. Woo. We'll try it without the extension. Oh, mine can't. Ow. Yes, sir. As you can see, the body mount bushings on our Suburban were shot, so we decided to go ahead and split the body and frame. You want to use the extenders? Yeah. Okay. While we're at it, we might as well go ahead and get the frame all cleaned up by removing any hardware or brackets that we're not gonna need. Got it? Yep. We're also removing the bumpers because we've got some big plans for those as well. We're getting down to the nitty gritty yeah. here. You ready? Yep. Well, isn't that how projects go? You start taking it apart, and the next thing you know, you've got a bare frame. Well, Brandon did a great job getting this thing all cleaned up and painted, but where this thing really made the transformation is what we took off, mainly all of the mounting points for our leaf springs, because those things are going away. We're replacing them with four link and coilovers, front and rear. This is gonna be a bad machine. We're also gonna be ditching those 10 bolt axles for some one tons. These came out of a 77 K30 pickup truck. This is a 14 bolt full float rear axle and a Dana 60 Kingpin front axle. This is the holy grail of off-road swaps for one tons. Now we can just put these things underneath the truck and they'd work, but we wanna make these things beefy. So gears, lockers, bigger shafts, we're gonna put everything we can inside these and under that truck to make this thing unbreakable. Here's what we're going for. Unbreakable is the ultimate off-roader that can do a little bit of everything. Except, of course, leave you stranded. Big lift, tall tires, sinister black paint, and all the recovery gear. Just in case. We're gonna use aftermarket parts where we can, and then the rest, well, we're gonna build it ourselves with the steel you see here on the floor. Things like skid plates, bumpers, a brush guard, and even rock sliders, which is where we're gonna start. Yeah. 
Now I could just cut these old rockers out and replace them, then build the sliders underneath, but I'd rather kill two birds with one stone by building the sliders into the body. That eliminates the rust and gains me ground clearance. Dang, that looks good. No turning back now. I know, and I like it too, like square tubing, square body, yeah. it just works. Now we've torn this thing down quite a bit, but we did start to build it back up and it's got an even bigger transformation for next time. Today on Music City Trucks, the guys from Carcass help kick off our fab work. And as always, we're having a blast. All right. <laughs> Get you. Then, while Brandon continues the fab, I'll tear down this Dana 60 front axle and build it into a worthy addition to Project Unbreakable. Hey, welcome to Music City Trucks. We've got our 1991 Suburban in here. We're making some pretty good headway on it. We've got a really fun day planned today. We've got a couple of guys in here to help us out. Some buddies of ours, Jimmy and Jeremy from our sister show, Carcass. Guys, thanks for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're all about efficiency in our shop, so anything we can do to help, we're at your disposal. And we both love square bodies, so this should be a fun little project. Cool, yeah, so the last time you saw this thing, we got it stripped down to the bare frame, which wasn't on our list of <laughs> no. things to do, but that's okay. Uh, and uh, got the frame painted up real nice, and Brandon even installed some pretty cool rock sliders. So we're calling this project Unbreakable, and to achieve that, we're doing one tons, four link coilover, and a bunch of fab work, which is what we're gonna be doing today. And the front bumper is kind of my baby, so Jimmy, with your CNC plasma skills, I think we could knock that front one out real quick. Let's do it. And Jeremy, that means you and I are on the rear. Let me show you what we got going on over here. All right, here. let's take a peek here. So this is just a sample of the two by four tubing we're gonna use. This is the same stuff Brandon used for the rock sliders, right. but we wanna make the bumpers out of these. So we wanna keep it, you know, a little bit of gap there between the, the barn doors so we have some clearance. You're gonna tuck it then, right? Yeah, maybe come off about the thickness of the, of the tubing or maybe at least an inch. Okay. But we wanna keep it pretty tight, yeah. So I think the easiest way to go about doing this then is just cut the chassis, square it up, yeah. and put a piece of tube on there and see what it looks like. All right, yeah, let's grab some tools. All right. <laughs> Just a little bit. Wow, I like it. All right, so we just need to figure out what we're gonna do with these forward bars. I think we'll just lop these off later. All right, well then uh, let's go forward from here and see what it looks like. All right, Mark, what do you think of that angle? It looks good. It's about five degrees. Okay, yeah, so my idea with that is to, if we have a little bit of an angle here, that actually helps with our departure, like, you know, if it lands on a rock. Right. So it acts as a rock slider and a bumper. That's not going anywhere. No, that's that's fine right there. I like that. It looks pretty good. Yeah, and it lines up with the rocker too. And you're gonna come in and cut this anyways, exactly. and you're gonna cap that end off. We'll get to all that. Uh, I guess I can start cutting the other side out. Yeah, because you got a, a wheel weld to deal with now. Yep, and spare tire. While you're doing that, I'm gonna get started on the spare tire carrier. Okay. Brought some tools down, it's gonna make our lives a whole lot easier. Awesome. So. For the spare tire carrier, we're gonna be using some pretty simple stuff. We're gonna use a swing away kit, some rectangular tubing, some round tubing, and we're gonna be using a wheel adapter. That way the boys can swing the tire away to get into the back of the Suburban. First step is to drill a couple holes. One thing on the front bumper is I wanna make it removable. Yeah. That way if you get any damage or whatever, mm -hmm. you can fix it. Um, I think we need to take this bracket off, so that means cut these four rivets. Yeah. That way we have a flat surface for the tube to sit on. Yeah, something too is if we actually tack the tube in here, we can actually use these holes as like a drill guide. That way we get our bolts and everything to line up perfect. Yeah. If 
we just set these kind of at zero degrees relative to the body, we'll just use like the three bottom holes and the two holes from the body mount. Maybe uh, 30 degrees. Okay. That looks pretty good. And we'll cut it at 15 and kind of do a little miter cut on this one so the edges match. Zero. <laughs> Was. It's looking like something. Well, we got the extensions installed, so the main part of our bumper is finished, but we got the frame hanging down here where the original bumper was, so we either need to cut that off or make an extension. I think making an extension with this would be great because that's multi-purpose. We can mount a skid plate to it, we can put a hitch in there, pretty much whatever we want. While I'm working on the bumper, Jeremy is gonna whip us up a spare tire carrier. Looks like you got yours done and oh. so did I. Oh, that looks awesome. All right, ready? Yep. Ah, swinging. <laughs> nice. I figure next step is just lob the fenders off, figure yeah. out that angle. Oh, yeah. Fair lead needs to be probably right there. All right, so we got all of our measurements for stuff we need to cut on the plasma, so we should head down to the carcass shop and start cutting. Yeah, thank you. This is looking pretty good. Just gotta get it over to the plasma table and we'll cut it out. first of many pieces. Diamond plate. Yeah. This will be perfect for some steps. This is why we don't throw old metal away, because you just might be able to find a use for it someday. Like this diamond plate I'm putting on the front bumper. Done! Well, not really. <laughs> Brandon, I heard you say you were done. <laughs> uh, what'd you guys get accomplished here? Halfway done. We got the structure and all the bones put together. Brush guard and the, the fair lead cage is still in my head. <laughs> it looks really good though. It's a good start. Yeah, and then I noticed under here these are sticking down. I guess you'll... Yeah, we're gonna lob those off and then make a skid plate that goes to the axle. I like it. Very nice. Very I like nice. the way it's going. You wanna see what we did out back? Yes. Yeah, you're gonna lie. I'm gonna get this. the whole view. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, guys. Dude. Oh, it follows the contour. Yeah, we tugged like it. that. The tailgate. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for all your help. No problem. Uh, I mean, yeah. this was huge. Uh, and for the use of the tools and all that. Can yeah. you leave this stuff? Keep the tools, bring okay. it back when you're done. Awesome. Thanks. Coming up next, now that we've got a great start with the carcass guys, Mark and I take the fab work to another level. Well, we lost our help on these bumpers, but I still got a lot of stuff to do and I got to build a brush guard, so I'm gonna go bend some tubing. And I'm gonna cipher what we need to do about the wheel openings. Definitely have to get the trim out of the way and get our excess cut off, but then we might as well open them up a bit. We're expanding the wheel openings because they're designed for the stock tire height. And since we're going with big tires and lots of suspension travel, we need all the room we can get. All 
All right, we're gonna bend it to 90. We're gonna be using inch and 5 eighths tubing for the main hoop on our brush guard. The theme is unbreakable, and the last thing we want is the inconvenience of a broken headlight or a punctured radiator. For our headlight hoops, I bent up some inch and a half tubing and notched it to fit the contours of our main hoop. You can see I've already measured and marked where the tube's gonna land. Now, I tack it in first to make sure all the angles are right. Once I like where everything sits, it's time for finish welding, but I'll get to that later. Now that we're pretty much done cutting and tacking everything in on this project, I want to talk about the machine we've been using. It's a Forney 220 MP, which is a multi-process unit. It does MIG, stick, and even TIG. You can also plug this thing into a 110 or 220, and it recognizes the volts that you put into it. So all you have to do is plug it in, grab the wand, and literally just start welding. Now this thing welds up to half inch plate, which is more than perfect for our project, because we've been using 11 gauge and quarter inch plate. So I have a lot of welding to do, so let's start burning it in. Up next, while Brandon continues with the fab work, I'm stripping down this Dana 60. We are rocking and rolling on our 91 Suburban project that we're calling Unbreakable. We got a lot of fab work done today already with the help of the guys down in Carcass, but there's still quite a bit left to do, a bunch of the finish welding and stuff like that. So Brandon's focusing on that, and while he's doing that, I'm gonna tackle the axle builds, specifically the front axle. This is a Dana 60. We do have a 14 bolt rear, but I'm not really gonna focus on that because the axle build's a little more complicated, and besides, Dana 60s kinda carry across the board. Uh, this does have a kingpin style setup, which is really highly sought after, but it does require some specific components. But other than that, everything Dana 60 is pretty much Dana 60, whether you're talking about Ford, Dodge, or GM. That being said, there's a ton of aftermarket components available, no pun intended. Uh, everything from the axles to the diff, spindles, bearings, seals, gaskets, I mean, it's all there and we're gonna replace it all, all the way down to the wheel studs and even the brakes. We've even got a truss there we're gonna install, although we may not get to that today because I wanna focus on the tech of the axle build itself because it can be a little complicated. Now, since we do have all those new components, everything here has to go pretty much except the housing. So now, just gotta get dirty and make some noise. The fluid in this axle looked really good, but we're not really concerned with that because everything in here is gonna get replaced anyway. However, if you wanted to run a Dana 60 in your rig, you could keep it completely stock and it would provide you with plenty of strength and longevity. Cool. After draining the oil, we'll start disassembly by removing the locking hubs. Which will allow us to access the hub nuts Then the hub and spindle can be removed, followed by the axle shaft. The caps can be removed next, which frees up the diff. Then out comes the pinion. Now it's time for some kingpin fun. Now we told you before how popular these Kingpin Dana 60s are for off-roaders, but when it comes time to rebuild them, sometimes it can take a little bit of, gotta bring the heat. Persuasion. Woohoo! Ah. Up next, isn't setting up diffs so much fun? 
time to build our front axle. Well, I've made some pretty good headway on the Dana 60 front end build for our 91 Suburban Project Unbreakable. Probably saw all the things on the table here earlier, but I want to dig in a little bit deeper. We got everything here from Summit Racing, and let's start with the diff. 35 spline locker, all of the axles to accommodate that, including these massive joints to connect the inners and outers. And we've got some upgraded knuckles here. Uh, this is a big upgrade from the factory. And then everything else we need to get it assembled. Kingpin rebuild kits, bearings, seals, shims, hubs, spindles, and even this cast iron diff cover, which is a really nice upgrade. As for the housing itself, you saw earlier I was cutting some of the brackets off. Uh, I got all of the spring perches, the shock mounts, and even the steering stabilizer bracket off of there. Got it all ground down smooth, cleaned it up real good, and you can see I got some paint on it. That's just a weld through primer because we still need to install all of our four link, but that's going to be later on. Uh, we even have the truss back there that's got to get welded on. For now, I want to focus on getting the internals built, and I got it all cleaned out in there so it's ready for assembly. The first thing I'm going to put on, though, is the ring gear onto the diff. With the ring gear drawn onto the carrier, I put some red thread locker on the bolts and torque them to 110 foot-pounds. The outer pinion bearing race can be installed along with the axle seals. I think we're there. Well, this is the point in the process where we need to figure out pinion depth and we start with the inner pinion bearing. Now, what I would normally do is take this inner bearing race, drive it into the housing, and then use a setup bearing on the pinion here to figure out how many shims need to go between the gear and the bearing. But this axle is a little bit different. Actually, some Dana 60s are like this, some are not. The shims actually go behind the race in the housing. So what we need to do is have a setup race. And I just took the one that came out of here and ground it down so it'll slip in and out. And I took the shims that came out of here for a starting point. So we're going to put those in, then the race, then the pinion, and that's where we'll start. We're going to temporarily install the outer bearing and yoke in order to check and adjust our setup. We're using some washers here so the lock nut doesn't fully engage. We'll drop the center section in, install the shims, and snug down the caps. We're using a dial indicator on the ring gear to measure the backlash. We've got about 12 thousandths, which is a good starting point. It's a little bit out of spec, but close enough to go ahead and check the pattern. And this one looks pretty good. Time for final assembly, which will start with driving in the inner pinion bearing race that I mentioned earlier. We'll press on the carrier bearings and the inner pinion bearing. With the pinion in the housing, the outer shims can be installed, followed by the outer pinion bearing, which needs to be driven on followed by the pinion seal, the yoke, and the nut, which gets tightened. Now's the time to check pinion preload. Ours is good, so we can move on to installing the diff, carrier shims, and caps. The caps need to be torqued to 80 pound-feet. And now it's time to get our final measurements, starting with backlash, which is 10 thousandths just within spec. We'll run another pattern and I'll take it. With the hard part done, it's time to move on to the knuckles. and bring this Dana 60 into the 21st century and make it worthy of Project Unbreakable. While we're freshening and strengthening this axle where we can, there are some components we need to reuse, like the caliper bracket, dust shields, and hub housings. We cleaned them up and gave them a coat of black paint to keep them looking new.
With the new bearings in place, we can install the hub nuts, followed by the locking hubs. And now, we're headed to the finish line. Oh yeah. We're using Yukon Gear's Hardcore Locking Hub Set. You'll notice the assembly is a little different than the OE style locking hubs, but these are stronger, and that's just what we want for Unbreakable. Well, I know these wheels and tires aren't gonna get us anywhere, but I gotta see what they look like under here. And it's gonna give you a better idea of what this rig's gonna look like when we're all done. And that's probably about where ride height's gonna be. So I'm really excited about it. But I feel like we got a lot done today. I mean, I'm exhausted. Yeah, uh, I mean, pretty much all the fabrication is done besides the suspension. And speaking of suspension, our front 14 inch coilovers on the ground, along with Pat's 383 stroker that he built us. Yeah, that thing's awesome. We'll dig in more about that next time, along with all the other supporting components, transmission, transfer cases, those axles. I got the Dana 60 all done, finally, uh, but I do have to get that 14 bolt built. I'll work on that later. We'll get all that under the truck. Oh, and you're gonna paint the truck too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so if you think we got a lot accomplished today, make sure you come back and see where we take Unbreakable. today on Music City Trucks. It's beginning to look like something. I know. I'm giving us a new fuel system. I'm breaking out a new cowl and hood. And then we'll show you how to install a four-link suspension. Hey everybody, welcome to Music City Trucks. You may recognize some of the parts laying around here. We've got all the four link, 14 bolt, and kingpin Dana 60 that are going in our 1991 suburban project that we're calling Unbreakable. Now it might sound like an impossible task, but we figured that, hey, we're crazy enough to try it. And we've gotten a lot of progress on this project, but we can't lie, it's, it's been an uphill climb. Yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, mine can't. Ow. Ow. No turning back now. I have no idea what I'm doing. You know, one tons, four link, and coilovers are awesome, but this rig would be all knees and elbows if it wasn't for our friends down in engine power. Let's just say I don't have to make engine noises anymore. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? Let's do it. The boys down in Engine Power whipped us up a 383 stroker small block Chevy that makes 490 horsepower and 492 pound feet of torque. Not bad. So let's quit playing around. Let's get the flex plate on, get the transmission bolted in, and get this stuff in the truck. Let's do it. With the kind of torque this stroker makes, we decided to upgrade our flex plate to an SFI spec from B&M. We installed it with some ARP hardware and torqued them to spec. Let's get the transmission on. We're also using ARP fasteners to attach the transmission to the block. Like it was meant to be. Maybe come down just a little bit. Speaking of the transmission, it's a Gearstar 4L80E, built to accept our 203 range box. All right, you go ahead and go up a little bit then. Just careful, hold on, let me back up. Nice that we left everything loose, but a lot of wiggling. The angle looks pretty good. Until we can make our cross member, this tube will hold everything up. He's off. 
It's in there. Woo! Well, it's, it's beginning to look like something. I know. So we just need some fuel and cooling and electrical and just starting. A couple bolts. Charging. Yeah. And <laughs> It'll get there. Coming up, it's a new fuel tank, pump, and lines for Unbreakable. Uh, we're doing a great job of getting the big stuff taken care of on our Suburban here, like the major drivetrain components, the engine transmission. We got all the axles fit, but we took those back out because Brandon's working on getting them painted up now as well as the front clip. But while that clip's out of the way and this thing's able to lower down onto the ground here, this is a great time for us to take care of some of the supporting systems like the fuel. Uh, the EFI system that was originally on this truck was that throttle body injection, TBI. Less than ideal, uh, you'll probably remember it broke down on us while it was out in the field when we first got this rig, uh, but it wasn't the EFI's fault, it was actually bad wiring. But while we're at it, it's a good idea to go ahead and upgrade the EFI as well since we're upgrading everything else. And what we're gonna go with is this Holly Sniper EFI. We went with the Super Sniper 650, which is capable of supporting up to 650 horsepower, whether you're talking about a boosted application or naturally aspirated like we're doing. The ECU is built in, that's what's here on the front, so it's a nice compact unit that's easy to install. They take a lot of the guesswork out, having the wires already terminated with these pigtails here. You just need to plug in the harnesses. The main one is this power harness here. You only need to connect a few wires. It even has the relay built in and a power feed to your fuel pump, so that takes a lot of the guesswork out. Uh, this unit right here is the touchscreen handheld, which goes inside the vehicle. Uh, you can configure this to your application. You can do things like have your tack up there if you want to monitor your air fuel or something like that. You can also do programming through this unit if you so desire, although this is a self-tuning unit, you don't need to do that. The way it does its self-tuning is mainly with these two sensors here. We've got a coolant temp sensor and a wideband O2, and both of those need to be installed to get this unit to run properly. And then you've got this optional harness here, which has inputs and outputs, which you can also program through your handheld. Now, what I like about this unit especially is if you're doing a swap from like a carb to EFI, this is ideal because it's got the 4150 base plate. So it's a real simple, easy way to install. And you can use just a standard four barrel intake manifold and it bolts right in and just hook up those few wires and you're on your way. Well, for the wiring, we're going to save that until later when we wire up the rest of the stuff here in the engine bay. For now, I want to focus on the fuel delivery itself. There are four ports on this unit here. You can see two are capped off. If you're running a boosted application, you might want to use those. But if you're doing naturally aspirated like we are, the easiest way to set this up is to use this as your feed and then this as your return. They're both dash six. This one you can see here, it's got this weird shape. That is the fuel pressure regulator that's non-adjustable and it's set to 58 and a half PSI, which is exactly what this unit requires. Well, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different on this. Uh, so we are gonna deadhead into the feed here. So we are gonna eliminate the return. We just need to cap that off and then we can move on to the rest of the fuel system. Now to replace this fuel system on our Suburban front to back completely, we only need three part numbers. The Sniper EFI is number one. Number two is gonna be what's on the table right here, starting uh, about right here down. It is the EFI conversion kit. It's actually made for 82 to 87 Jimmies and Blazers, but it also works on the square body Suburbans. Comes with the tank, of course, brand new, new straps to get it installed. And then in these three holes here, it's gonna be a new filler neck, New sending unit, which we'll have to adjust and same with the fuel pump assembly here. And it comes with this 255 liter per hour pump. That's gonna be more than enough to feed our 383 stroker. And of course, all the stuff to get that installed, including this rollover valve here. Uh, the last part number that you need would be this EFI delivery kit. It comes with this vapor guard hose. Really all you need on something like this, um, the fittings, hose ends, and the clamps to clamp the hoses to those fittings. And even this filter that'll go somewhere in between the rear and the front before it gets to the engine. But the one thing that we opted for on our rig here is gonna be this fancy little piece right here. It is a filter regulator assembly. It's really cool because the fuel that comes out of that fuel pump will go into the filter here. And once it comes out of the filter, it'll go through this regulator 
that is non-adjustable and regulates the fuel pressure down to 58 and a half PSI. Again, exactly what we need at the sniper. And that 58 and a half PSI will come right out of here, go toward the front of the vehicle. And then out of this port is the return back to the tank. That's nice for us because we can mount that here in the rear close to the tank. So we'll have a really short return and we'll only need to run one hose all the way the length of this big vehicle. So that's really nice. We just need to get the tank assembled with all of this stuff here and we can get it hung, do some plumbing. The fuel level sender is first. Once we get it snugged down, we'll install the filler neck. Now the pump assembly can go in, making sure the ports are facing the direction we want them. We'll install the hoses and get the tank hung. Transmission jack probably would have been good, but it would have blocked where my straps are gonna go. With the straps tight, we can move on to getting the filter regulator installed, which we're bolting directly to the frame. in there. Now we can plumb the feed and return lines. And finally, the supply line to that sniper. And that was as easy as it looked. We do have a few wires to hook up when we get to that point and then throttle linkage and that system is all done. Up next, it's time for a new cow and hood. Oh, wow. how do you like that fit? Well, I'm back at it again with some more paint work, this time on new sheet metal. I got a new wiper cowl and a brand new hood from Brothers Truck Parts. Now, I know some of y'all are a little intimidated by the aftermarket sheet metal world because let's be honest, the fitment isn't that great, but the Brothers stuff actually fits really well. And it's going to cut down a lot of prep time because this stuff comes e-coated. All you got to do is red scuff pad it and you're ready to spray. All we're doing is knocking the initial shine off the coating and getting a little tooth for that paint to adhere. That's a good looking hood right there. Let's turn those black panels satin black. We're doing the front clip the same way we painted the body. Two coats, first one wet, second one medium. And being a single stage, that's all it needs. All right, before we get that new sheet metal from Brothers bolted on, we gotta cut out the inner fenders of the front clip so we can clear these shock hoops we installed. All we gotta do is take a measurement and start throwing some sparks. Mm, 39, three and a half, 28. I'm gonna go ahead and use the body line because it's close enough to the measurement I took. Then just buzz it off with a cutoff wheel. All right, Frankie, thanks for helping me with this. Yeah, no so. problem, man. Try to get it on without scratching it, I guess. Yeah. So while Mark's out camping, I snagged Frankie from Engine Power to help put the front clip on. You got bolts for this, or? Yeah. We're putting it on the same way Mark and I took it off, with a chain and hoist. This time, it's a little different because the goal is not to scratch the paint. Yeah, I cut that one off. Okay. Um, awesome. Thanks. No problem. If you could tell, aesthetics are not at the top of the list of priorities. But there are certain things you have to have on an off-road rig, like wipers and washers.
Well, now I got Jeremy helping me out <laughs> putting the hood on. Well, when you come down and say you needed somebody a little bit taller to yeah. get the hood on here, I figured I'd come and help. The paint looks really good. Thank you. I like how you did that. I'm come a big, down with it just a little bit. Big fan of the flat black. It it turned out amazing. Yeah. And this was vintage flats, right? Yep. Look at that. We didn't even scratch the paint. I like that. Now you got to close it. See how good you did. Yeah, right. see if we got it lined up. All right, come up. Do a little, little tweak in here. Yeah, just a little bit. I think we gotta come forward on my side. All right. Just a little bit as well. The hood's nice and straight though. Yeah, it came, it, it came in with not a dent or scratch. Dent or, or scratch in. or an imperfection in it. Which is nice. That's always one big thing when you've got hoods that show up is how much big work panels. am I gonna have to do to the hood? Oh yeah, you got it now. Oh, wow. how do you like that fit? So where did the hood come from though? Uh, Brothers Truck Parts. Oh, we used all of their same stuff on our tow truck. We had oh this, yeah, the floors and rockers and yeah, everything? Yeah, we had the 77 tow truck, so we had both drivers and passenger floors, inner and outer rockers. We had a bunch of little patch panels, sail panels and stuff like that. Yeah. All their parts fit really, really well. Yeah, what we used is the new wiper cowl and this hood. And I mean, like you can see the gaps and everything. Yeah, I can't believe how well. The literally, literally I just scuffed it and painted it. Shot it? Yeah. Yeah, it looks really, really good. Yeah, thank you. Matches the whole truck. I like it. Right. Well, do you need anything else? Because, you know, no, we always that's, got stuff going on. That's the last of the heavy lifting for right now. Cool. Well, if you need anything else, call Jimmy next because okay. I'll be busy. <laughs> All right. Well, we've gone this far, so we might as well wrap up the rest of the exterior trim. Yeah. Well, starting to look like a truck. Now we need to make it sit like a truck, and that's exactly what we're about to do. Coming up, the front suspension is finally taking shape. All right, in the paint booth one last time, and I'm gonna be painting some suspension components on our Suburban project. For the accent color, we went with red oxide from Venice Flats. Now I got a little excited and went ahead and put the first coat on, and I'm about to put the second coat on. And let me tell you, this color looks sick. Now we didn't want to completely black out the whole truck, and I think this color matches our character of the truck perfectly. We're making some pretty good headway here on our Suburban. Brandon did a great job getting a bunch of stuff painted up. Since he's finished with that, figured I could come out of hiding and help him get the axle and suspension up under this rig for the final time. Here you go, bud. Thanks. We gotta go what, here first? In the front first. We've got all of our links set at the proper length, so all we need to do is get them in here without scratching them. I just straight up stole that bowl. <laughs> <laughs> now you can see the contrast of the red oxide and the black, and it looks good. I don't want to scratch this, uh, uh, scratch this precious paint. Now that all the links are installed, we can go ahead and get the coilovers hung. Sometimes the paint makes it a little aggravating to get those bolts in.
Now we haven't talked about the steering since I called out Mark for putting the steering arm on the wrong knuckle, which is an honest mistake because the factory one goes on the driver's side knuckle with a small drag link and it's actually a push-pull style steering which binds up off-road, which is not what we want. So we're going to be converting it over to a crossover steering. What that means is the steering box is on the driver's side, the drag link crosses over the axle to the passenger side. And that's going to keep all the range of motion while we're inside an obstacle and all the geometry stays happy because of how much we lifted the truck. Right, so we only need a few pieces other than that arm that's on the correct knuckle now. And uh, one of those is that long drag link that crosses over. And then this particular Pittman arm, both of which we got from ORD. And then the rest, well, it's just OEM style stuff. There's a couple of specific parts you need though. This is a steering box for a 91 Suburban like ours, except this is for two wheel drive because of the style steering it is, we have to have that style. The four wheel drive one just won't work. The other thing we did was we got brand new tie rod ends, outer left and right, as well as an adjuster here. And those are actually for the Dana 60 for that K30 that that axle came out of. We got all of that stuff from rockauto.com. So now all we need to do is get the steering box installed and then we can get the rest on there. We got the wrench. Let's see. The biggest difference between the two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive steering box is that the two-wheel drive is a swing style and the four-wheel drive is a push-pull, which won't work with our crossover steering. Once the box and pitman armor are installed, we can go ahead and finish up the steering with a drag link and tie rod. Oh yeah. Now I know we've seen this thing on the ground before, but now it's got the front clip on it and all the weight of the transmission and the engine and all in there it's sitting where it's supposed to be. And I love how it looks, especially with the links all painted up under there. Now I'm 6'4", and uh, but this thing doesn't lie. And it says that we are 33 inches from the ground at the rocker. Dude, those are big boy numbers. I know. If this isn't the most menacing four link coilover, one ton swap suburban in the world, I don't know what is. I mean, it sounds like a micro record, but I'll take it either way because it is extreme. I love it with the black and all the links yeah, under there. They're like, I'm ready to party. Dude, and speaking of partying, next time we take this out to party. Yeah, I, it just needs a couple things. Yeah, like cup holders. I was thinking like the bumpers and the winch. Bump, yeah, rear cup holders too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for the cup holders. <laughs> if you'd like to know more about our Suburban, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out Unbreakable's project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes are right there on one page. Today on Music City Trucks, we're getting Unbreakable ready for the mountain with some interior work, new steering, some unique shifters, plus a new exhaust and recovery gear. And then we're ready for one big payoff. Yeah, so like the pavilions just overlook the water. It's yeah. a really nice campground. Super family friendly. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Christ. And I'm Brandon Burke. And this time we're back on Project Unbreakable. Now this 91 Suburban has come a long way from where it started. And although it looks like a complete truck, it's not running and it's not driving. And those are the things that we're gonna tackle today. We're gonna take the grill and hood back off the truck to make it a little easier to work on. under here. Now we're going to be working on the front accessories starting with the water pump. If you hold it I'll get them started. There you go, you should be able to get it from there. We got this kit from Summit Racing. It's a nice simple serpentine setup. Got another bracket? Yep. Which one? Most outer? Okay, right here. 
This is the outer bracket for the alternator. Next, the water pump pulley. Followed by the crank pulley. I gotta go get that power steering pump ready. All right. Could use power tools, but feel more connected to the truck this way. This is your bolt for the adjuster. Okay. Which goes in that hole right there. That hole? Yep. Leave it close to tight. Oh, uh, this is the pulley for the power steering pump. Last piece. You can get the uh, keyway or the uh, woodruff key. That's it. With our belts on order, we're moving on. Well, one of the things on this build we haven't really addressed is the brakes. Now we did upgrade to one ton axles and we converted the rear to disc brakes. So we were already gonna have to upgrade our braking system. Uh, the master cylinder that was on this truck originally was an inch and a half in diameter. So we switched to this Willwood system that's an inch and an eighth diameter piston. That's actually gonna give you more braking power with less effort. We got this from Summit Racing. This kit's cool. It comes with the proportioning valve, which is adjustable for the rear. Uh, normally this mounts on the other side and the ports point down, but because of our clearance issues here with our coilovers, I had to flip it around. Uh, that way the ports point up. Uh, that might be a little difficult when it comes time to bleed the brakes. Uh, we might get a little air trapped up in here, but it's worth the uh, hassle just to have a nice master like this with plenty of braking power. There you go. Bigger radiator, electric fan. It's a nice looking radiator too. What more do you want? Oh, look at you gotta give me props for my brackets. I was just about to say, you didn't even give me a chance. <laughs> nice. Can I leave this with you? I got the rest of it. We got this frostbite radiator from Holly. Hand tools are always so much more fun. And the hoses are OEM replacement. The cooling system's pretty much wrapped up besides this bottom radiator hose. So all that's really left is a little bit of electrical, power steering lines, and bleeding the brakes. So I'm calling all the underhood stuff done. Up next, bye-bye interior. Now it's time to tackle one of the most disgusting interiors in the world. Not only does it smell gross, there's a bunch of stuff broken on it. Like this old steering column and radio, this seat with a little bit too much lumbar adjustment, and everything overall is just disgusting. So let's rip all this stuff out and give it a new look. Ooh, cricket. Oh no. Oh. There we go. Call that the country lane, dude. Just chilling. Wow. Carpet and trim is cool and all, but a bare floor is gonna serve our purpose much better in this rig. Let's see what uh, stories this truck's got. This one makes a kunk, kunk. Since this carpet is 50 shades of trash, we're gonna do the interior upgrade of deleting it. Well, I'm gonna start working on the onboard air. We got this kit right here from Summit Racing. It's got two compressors and a two gallon tank. It's gonna be plenty for what we need on this rig. The main thing we need this for is gonna be for our air locker in our rear, but then we also wanna have onboard air to air up our tires after we air them down for our off-roading excursions. Now we're gonna accomplish that with this plate right here. Check it out. You'll probably remember this big hole where we cut the spare tire well out when we installed our rear bumper extensions. 
This plate we're installing using the factory bolt holes in the floor is gonna serve two purposes. It's a block off plate for that hole we cut and it's a mounting plate for all of that onboard air equipment. With the panel fit and painted, we can bolt it back in. All right, well, that's pretty much it for our onboard air. We do need to wire up the pumps and the gauge and install some fittings and do the plumbing. Other than that, this is ready to go. Well, our front seats are obviously trash, so I went on the internet and found this bench seat for no particular reason besides me and Mark thought it was cool. So I figured throw it in the truck, put some Covercraft seat covers on it. The only problem is you're sitting in my seat. Well, you gotta wrestle me for it. <laughs> We're using Marathon seat covers by Covercraft. These just slip on over our existing upholstery. They're made of 100% Cordura nylon. They're completely waterproof, durable, and made for high traffic environments like our interior. Oh yeah. There we, we go. We should probably put the front bolts in too. <laughs> now our Suburban was, let's just say neglected when we got it. Uh, there's a lot of things that get neglected on 30 year old vehicles, even ones that are well kept. One of those in particular is the rubber. So we went to steel rubber for a bunch of new stuff. They specialize in this. This is what they do. So their quality is really high. The fitment is good. Longevity, all the things you want. You can just make one stop with them. Uh, they've got a bunch of other stuff on our rig that we didn't get, but what we chose were some run channels. We got new window felts. We had a new windshield seal in case we decide to put a new glass in ours. And then of course, all the door seals. These probably get abused the most just from getting in and out of the rig. Here you go, bud. Almost ready. It's exactly what Mark was talking about. Look how smashed and rotten this seal is. This one's gonna be around for a long time. We're working on wrapping up the onboard air system with this nylon hose and the wiring. And the problem with those two things is, well, rodents like to chew on them, specifically mice. And with a rig like this, you're not gonna be able to park it in a regular garage, so it'll end up in the barn or out under a lean-to. So you need something like this. This is the Mouse Blocker Pro. This is what we're using. It wires right into the vehicle's 12 volt system, just anywhere you see battery voltage and it recognizes the battery voltage. You don't have to worry about it running the battery down. If it sees below 11 volts, it's just gonna automatically shut off. If it sees above 13 volts, it'll automatically shut off as well because it knows that you've fired up the vehicle. So there's really no maintenance when it comes to this. It's got three different settings. The highest one is 105 decibels of supersonic sound that comes out of here. And then it's got some flashing LEDs too to help deter those mice. Just need to get this thing wired in and get it set up. Last thing we're gonna do to this interior is get this old broken steering column. You can tell it's kind of worn out. Uh, I got everything else disconnected besides this last nut. So all I gotta do is disconnect that and pull this thing out. Our steering column is junk, but the one we got from Summit Racing is universal and fits our truck with a couple brackets. Since the hub's already installed, we went ahead and got a new steering wheel too. Coming up, we shift into high and low gear. Now we're back underneath the truck finishing up the drivetrain. We've already talked about our 383 stroker, so I'm not gonna go into any more detail on that. But what we haven't talked about is our transmission and transfer case setup. We were gonna run the 700 R4, but our buddies down at Gearstar said you gotta run our 4L80E with the Stage 4 kit. Now they actually custom built this. It's a two-wheel drive case with a four-wheel drive adapter on the back, which means we keep our speed sensor in the transmission since we got rid of ours on the transfer case. Now it being a Stage 4, it's gonna handle all the heat we're gonna put into this thing off-road. And with the overdrive, it's gonna handle great on the highway. Uh, moving on from there, we're gonna talk about our transfer case. This is actually a 203 with an off-road design adapter plate. This is actually a range box. What a range box is, it's a high, neutral, low with no two outputs for the front or rear. It's just got one output on the back. Now after our adapter is our MP205, this is our actual transfer case. 
So it has a rear and a front output for our drive shafts. Now this one also has a high neutral low and with both of these set up, you essentially double your gear reduction. And one question you might be asking is why would we need that? Well, here's why. For low range, trans in first, it has a 248 to one ratio. The MP203 range box has a two to one ratio. The MP205 is a similar ratio at 1.96 to one. And our axle ratio is 456 to one, which gives us a final drive of 44.33 to one. What does that mean? It means for every 44.33 turns of the engine, the tire will make one revolution. Now for high range. Overdrive is 0.75 to one, with both the range box and the T-case being a one to one. Our axle ratio stays the same at 456, giving us a final drive of 3.42 to one. That's 3.42 turns of the engine to every one tire rotation. With those two numbers and our tire size of 38 and a half inches, that means in low, 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 at five miles an hour, we're running 1,934 RPM. And in high, at 70 miles an hour, it's 2,089 RPM. So what that's gonna allow us to do is cruise this thing down the interstate comfortably, and then when we get to the off-road part, shift everything into low and then crawl over, pretty much whatever we want, within reason, of course. Uh, the next thing we need to do to start getting this stuff buttoned up is gonna be our shifters. Three of them. This is putting on the first bracket for the triple stick. And we gotta take these bolts out of the front output to get the bracket on. This is the bracket that crosses over for the rear engagement of high, neutral, low. Now you might be wondering what a triple stick setup is. To start off, it has three shifters, which will allow us to have more control over our four wheel drive. One shifter controls the front output, high, neutral, low. One shifter controls the rear output, high, neutral, low. And the third controls the range box output, high, neutral, low. The advantage of this setup is that you can control your front and rear outputs independently, meaning you can have rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, or front wheel drive, high or low, depending on your scenario. The only trick is to get all these links to work together without binding. Well, all right, this is where the shifter's gonna lay, so just drop the truck and cut the floor out. They'll turn him back now. <laughs> We're about to air saw this floor. Now Mark can hand me the shifter and we can test fit these linkages. Mm. Anything to help a brother out. Dude, this middle one is lined up almost perfectly. We could, so, we, so we just gotta shorten the outer ones? Yeah. All right, because I got T-Rex arms, we put the shifters pretty far back on the floorboard and they actually hit the bench seat. So all we gotta do is bend the shifters a little bit forward, put a little S in them, uh, and it should work pretty good. Oh, that's hot right there. Oh man, that's a good feeling. I'm good. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, with the transfer case set up complete and the shifters installed, uh, they actually work really nice. Drivetrain's done. All we gotta do is the drive shaft, so next step is to get this project buttoned up. Next, we finish the exhaust and get ready for the mountain. Let's see what we got as far as the test fit. Oh, that's close. Put like a 15 degree cut in it. We're jumping on our exhaust system on our Suburban, just like that. Mm-hmm, perfection. Right there. We're gonna use a Flowmaster three inch universal kit. 
we decided to run it as a true dual setup to keep it nice and simple. We decided to cross the passenger side over to the driver's side to avoid the transfer case and front drive shaft. If you cut, cut the other side to that length. Oh, that's money. We want to tuck it up as high as possible so it's not the first point of contact with any obstacle. This is a little chaotic because we're using a universal kit and just figuring it out as we go. We might need to put some heat shield on some of this. But what really matters, I like that, is the end result. Speaking of end results, Mark wanted tailpipes. But while he's welding hangers, I'm putting together an idea of my own. I got the uh, front hanger all in there. <laughs> You mean the only hanger? What do you have? I got all of the exhaust figured out. All right. These bad boys right here. <laughs> I mean, I like it, believe it or not. It actually looks really cool, but yeah. you know it's going to be loud, right? Dude, hey, we're here to party. If you really wanted to party, you'd point them at each other. Or up. <laughs> no, I like it. Let's do it. And just like that, our exhaust is all tacked in. Well, we're gonna switch gears again and start working on our recovery gear. Uh, you may remember our spare tire carrier here when we made it a while back. It's only tacked together for now because we knew we were gonna be coming back here and adding some stuff to it. That's why we left it long. We got a bunch of stuff from Holly from their anvil line. Uh, one of the things is this five gallon jerry can here. We're actually gonna mount this right here. Uh, I made this bracket out of 11 gauge. Just gonna weld it to the spare tire carrier right there. That'll be plenty strong enough. Uh, and then we still haven't made a latch for our spare tire carrier there, but uh, we've got this one right here. Just need to get that installed and then we'll move on to the rest. I made this mounting plate from 11 gauge steel. And now we can move on to our latch. Since our bumper and carrier are made of 120 wall, they're thick enough to drill and tap for some fine thread bolts. Wow, that's nice. Well, I mentioned recovery gear a little while ago from Anvil, and this is the stuff I was talking about. Just the basics to get you going. A couple of blocks, a couple of snatch straps, some clevises or D-links, and a weighted damper for our winch cable. And we scrounged up this weatherproof box here that was laying around the shop. We can put all that stuff in there along with some other things we might need like some hand tools and things like that. And then we're just going to strap this thing back in back here where the third row seat would have gone. We'll be done back here. Now all that gear that Mark just mentioned is pretty cool, but here's the icing on the cake. The winch. This is a 17,000 pound anvil winch that we used to build the bumper. But I just went back on their website and they came out with a synthetic version. This thing is lighter, stronger and safer. So of course we're going to use this one. And that was a nice winch row you did there. After installing the aluminum fair lead, we'll pull that synthetic rope through and attach our hook. Now time for the control box. Oh yeah. We just need to run some wires and this winch is ready for wheeling. Dude, I love how this thing turned out with the lights and the winch and the bumper all painted up. It just completes the look. Yeah, it's got that ultimate park ranger rescue truck vibe. Yeah, it's like uh, Walker, Texas Rangers daddy. Now, we wanted to fire this thing up for you guys today, and unfortunately, we ran out of time with all the wiring, but we did get a lot done. I mean, it was a huge show. Yeah, we got the triple stick shifter installed, and probably my favorite is the doubler underneath this truck. Yeah, and that allowed us to get our drive shafts on order, so those are coming. And we got a lot of other stuff done, like all the recovery gear in the back, our onboard air, we spruced up the interior, and tackled a bunch of stuff under the hood, cooling, belt drive, brakes, steering, even the exhaust. Yeah, so the next time you see this, you're not only gonna hear it run, but we're taking it back to AOP to show you guys what this monster can really do. Unbreakable's hitting the mountain. If you can't get enough of our Suburban, go to PowerNationTV.com and check out Unbreakable's project page. We have current build status, before and after pics, links to parts used, and all the episodes are right there on one page. Today on Music City Trucks, Unbreakable's done, and we're gonna find out just how unbreakable it is. We're gonna take it through the mountains, up some rocks, sling some mud, and let this thing rip. Well, 
what do you want to do? You want to just go ahead and conquer the first obstacles and just pass where our last stopping point was? Yeah. We have to at least do that. Yeah. Just to see how it compares. That's our starting point. There we go. Last time we were at AOP, we got stuck on the mountain, but we've added a ton of cool parts and turned this Suburban into our version of the ultimate off-road machine. Probably should have put hydro on it, but. Probably. Street truck. Oh yeah. Springs are a little soft, but. Springs are soft, but I think I could get used to it. Yeah, I think it's just because we're so high, even if, even the fact that we lowered a little bit. Yeah, it has no problem so far. Which this is kind of a mild trail, so. Yeah, it's the trailhead. Low is low enough though, don't you think? Yeah. Give her a little juice. Let's see what happens. to where we broke initially very easily, right? So I'm calling this the starting point. <laughs> okay, uh, so as far as this part goes, we've only seen a very small portion, maybe 3%, right? Parking brake works. Making sure the parking brake works, <laughs> it's creaking a little bit. Yeah, so we've only seen just the beginning, literally the trailhead. So we're gonna go up past where we were broken down before, see what this park's all about. Let's do it. I've already been behind the wheel. You, I'm driving. Take it. I was gonna say it right before you said that. <laughs> oh yes. No problem. It didn't even skip a rock or nothing. Feel that bumping? Or just the front digging? Yep. You want to try 35? Yeah. Let's see. Straddle the tree or try to go over it? I'd say go over the tree. Oh. Yep. Cleared. Got it. Nice having that light, no low end torque. Yes. It's like that. It's on. Love that. I felt like maybe the axle on a rock. Yeah, axle on the rock. Hold on. I think we put a bunch of diff guards on it. Uh, did we? Yeah, on the opinion guard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Opinion guard for the win on that one. Oh, yeah. Most of the weight of the vehicle on one tire, 
Looks like we aired down a little too much. Can I kiss it? Am I gonna kiss it? I'm gonna kiss it. Kiss it. My seatbelt will let me. Oh, uh, it won't let you kiss it? Oh no, it's in that part where like you pull it out too far and it won't let you. <laughs> let me get my seatbelt back on before you go again though. Yeah. We're at like a 30 degree angle here. Let's, uh, I'm gonna get out and spot it. With how tall our truck is, we suddenly gotten ourselves stuck in a tight spot and at a tricky angle. Here's the plan. Is, oh yeah. We're super. Yeah, you yeah. really need to straddle I, this I ditch, straddle but you this can't outside. because of the tree. I can't. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in reverse and I'm just gonna cut hard passenger. Right. Swing it this way and then kind of come yeah, up the hill a little bit more. Yeah, he's up there a little bit, yeah. This is doing it, man. It's doing it. Up next, after a quick recovery sesh, we're back down the mountain and headed for more. All right, so we gotta change that rear tire out and since we're on such an incline, I'm just gonna winch it to a tree just to be safe so the truck don't roll away. Well, that bonsai run up the hill spit the right rear tire off the wheel, so it's a good thing we brought a spare. Always use a tree saver. You just wrap the cable around this tree, you'll end up hurting it. And it's really not good for the cable, neither. All right, that's good right there. Yeah, but going on the trails is more fun. Gotta ease it down a little bit. Right. What, three Ugga Duggas? I think that's what these are rated at. Oh, dude. You mounted it on there backwards. Yeah, good thing we... We brought the driver spare. We didn't bring the passenger side spare. What were you thinking? Directional tires. I didn't even think about it. You know what? Now we're gonna be stuck up here. Stuck up here with the wrong we're tire. Gonna... Got the tire on the wrong side. There's no way we're getting out of this. Onward! Woo! Well, she may be damaged. Not broken. <laughs> Some people may call this broken. I call it bent. Just slightly damaged, just slightly. I mean, this setup works. Oh, this whole, yeah, everything we put in this truck is working the way it should. Well, I can imagine turning around and going back down the way we came up. Yeah, going up was a... This is gnarly right here. It was an adventure. I guess that's why they call it Adventure Off-Road Park, right? I, I guess so. Wow, what an awesome day. <laughs> well, hey, as I say... It's driving itself off the mountain. But well, we got the rocks in the mountain and the thing a little bit, but not broken. Right. So now we gotta hit the mud. Well, we have some things to fix when we get back, but hey, enough stuff has gone right today that you, we need the icing on the cake. It calls for a little celebration. Yeah. yeah. I, I call this successful. Quite frankly, I don't think this thing's dirty enough. Oh, it's definitely not dirty enough. the floor. <laughs> All right, well, that was an awesome day of wheeling. The Spurban still runs, but we roughed it up a little bit. Now that it's dirty, we're gonna take our Bauer pressure washer from Harbor Freight, get this thing all cleaned up. Delivering 2300 PSI of cleaning force, this mobile unit can tackle all your outdoor cleaning needs. It comes with multiple nozzles, including this turbo. This thing getting all the mud off. Woo! 
just like it came out of the studio. Today on Music City Trucks, Unbreakable is back in the shop and it's time to fix her up for a heck of a run in the mud. We upgrade the suspension, ignition box, steering, and wheels and tires. And you won't believe how Unbreakable pays it all off. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Brandon Burke. And I'm Mark Christ. And this is our 91 Suburban project that we've called Unbreakable. And depending on your interpretation of Unbreakable, this one's not broken. It's just bent. I mean, it doesn't move under its own power anymore because last time we took it out, we went to Adventure Off Road Park. And let's just say we ran into a couple of issues. Looks like we aired down a little too much. the floor. <laughs> now as far as all the mechanical underneath the truck, that's all perfectly fine. It worked exactly the way it should, but I didn't really beef up the rear suspension as well as I should have, and I ripped the bracket off the frame on an obstacle, so that's going to be one of the first things we want to fix, along with some other little things that went wrong. Yeah, and as far as the things that we're going to upgrade, well, there were several things that we wanted to do on this rig that we didn't get to do, and there were some things, well, we got some feedback from you guys in the comments that you said we should have done. One of those things are the wheels and tires, and... Uh, this is a Super Swamper TSL. We got this and the BART wheels, steel wheels. Uh, this is a 16 and a half by 12 steely. Uh, we got both of these from Summit Racing. Of course, we mounted them ourselves, but like this is the perfect wheel and tire combo if you want to get, compared to the bogger here, you want to get a lot more air so you get a little more flotation. You're going to have more ground clearance. It's going to make the truck ride a little higher and then also wider track width so you can get more traction either on the rocks or in the mud. So it's the perfect wheel and tire combo for our rig. But before we mount those wheels and tires on the truck, we gotta fix everything underneath the Suburban. And then at the end, we're gonna take it back to AOP, get this thing dirty, muddy, and riding high. Now where I hit that rock on the outside of the axle out here by the wheel, it did two things. One, it bent this coilover bracket and this upper link bracket and frame. Now when I hit the rock, it actually just broke the welds because I didn't fully weld it. That's my bad, so I'm just gonna bend it back over, weld it up and put a brace on it, it should be just fine. Dude, that is bent. Okay, to get that porter jack in between the frame rails, I'm gonna have to get this drive shaft off. After taking the drive shaft out, Rob, our camera guy, made a really good observation. Should take these links off so we get all the tension out of those brackets so it'll be easier. Oh! <whistles> Safety first, people. All right, well that just shows you how much of a bind this rear end was in. Why don't you just get them all loose and I'll come in and help you get them out? Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Now, one. All right, now that the axle's hanging by the limit straps and supported by these pole jacks, we're gonna get the porter jack in there and try to straighten that frame out. The Matco Tools 10-ton hydraulic ram makes quick work of straightening our frame. This one might work. All right, now that we got the bracket where we want it, we're going to tack it in. That way we can get that porter jack out of there. Oh. We're going to be using the torch to straighten this frame out because it's got a little S-curve in it. So we're going to relieve some stress right here and here where you can see where the kinks are. And uh, once we get it heated up, Mark's gonna start jacking and try to get this frame straight. Oh.
I wonder what I'll have for lunch. All right, now that we got the bracket straight on the frame rails and the axle centered back underneath the truck, I want to do an upgrade on these coilovers. So this bottom spring is a 350 pound spring and it was just a little too light. Once the truck started tipping, it just kind of folded right over and uh, it was really uneasy. So we're going to be upgrading this 350 spring to a 450. And all we got to do is take out this lock collar and replace them. All right, so we lifted the lock collar two inches because our spring's two inches taller. That way we get the same height on the truck when we put it back down on the ground. We're actually gonna be running the 450 on the top this time. Then we'll run the 600 on the bottom. So the reason why we put the lighter spring on the top is that way you can adjust where it stops that way you take up the load with the 450 while you're just driving normally. And then the 600 takes the heavy load once you pass that point. Should have done that from the beginning. We did it on the front, but I just totally didn't do it in the rear. Okay, there we go. Now that we got our secondary spring in the right spot, we'll be able to adjust our jam nuts once we get the truck down on the ground and all the weight put on these shocks. That way these springs can do their job properly. Now all I gotta do is limit straps, swap the other side, and we'll be done back here. Next, we're steering unbreakable straight towards our payoff. All right, now that we've fixed everything underneath the truck that needed to be fixed, it's time to move on to upgrades, and that's gonna be our steering. Now, in the last time the Suburban was in here, we just threw the stock steering back on it, but when you're running bigger tires, big lift, and you're going off-road, you're gonna wanna upgrade your steering. Now, that could be hydro assist or full hydro like Jeremy and Jimmy have got on their Jeep. You know, and we built the Jeep both ways. We started off with hydro assist, and then we did an upgrade like you guys are doing, mm -hmm. we went to full hydro. Now, the two big differences there are full hydro uses like an orbital and just hydraulic pressure to steer. Mm -hmm. Hydro assist uses a gearbox with a little ram to help you turn left and right. Yeah, and that's what came off of this, and that's all Chevy stuff, so that's gonna bolt right onto our Dana 60. So this is the kit I scrounged from the Carcass Boys. This is actually specifically for a GM Dana 60. And the main difference between this box and our original box has got these two ports that are gonna support this ram. That's what's gonna assist our steering when we're on the trail. First thing we've gotta do is drill out this tie rod though. I'll give it a shot of seafoam deep creep to give it a little bit of lubrication. Originally this hole in the tie rod was for a stabilizer, but we're gonna retrofit it for the mounting point for our ram. Next thing we gotta do is put those brackets on, tack weld them to the tube check our throw. So I just made these tabs. Pump should be about in line with the tie rod. Let's make sure we got the stroke right from bump to bump. Nothing hits. I say that's gonna work. All I gotta do is finish welding that tab up, start on the lines in the box. It's free. All right, now that the pitman arm's off, we can get the hydraulic lines off and the steering shaft. There we go. Yeah, that's not bad. Like I said, these boxes are pretty much identical, but the PSC box actually has the ports for the RAM. Uh, we don't need this junk mail pitman arm, so we're gonna throw that in the toolbox and swap it out for ours. Now, if you've been wanting to do a hydro assist swap on your rig, this PSC box fits the factory location, so there's no need to modify your frame. You just gotta bolt it in. All 
All we really got to do is figure out how we want to route these hoses. So these hoses are super easy to make. Put a little oil in there. These fittings reverse screw on. Pretty much made the same way a AM line is. Let's see if it worked. Perfect. It's worked out nice. Now there is a specific way that these hoses need to be ran as far as the ports on the ram and on the steering box. So in this case, the port closest to the firewall actually drives the driver's side port on the ram and then the most forward port drives the passenger side. Now some other applications that's different. Well this hydro assist really steered this project in the right direction. <laughs> but on a serious note, this is a huge upgrade, especially since we're going with a bigger tire. Now the next thing we need to tackle is under the hood and its swimming abilities. Up next, we installed the ignition box, snorkel, and wheels and tires. Well, we're making some pretty good headway on our Suburban project here. We brought it back in the shop and made some repairs on some things that were damaged, like the suspension in the rear. And Brandon did a pretty cool upgrade on the front here, added a hydro assist steering kit. Now, our idea when we go back out is to spend more time in the mud than we do in the mountains. So that means waterproofing upgrades. And I'm gonna start with a snorkel. Yeah, and uh, another waterproof upgrade is gonna be this ignition box right here, which is what I'm gonna start on first. All right, I'll get on the snorkel. Oh. We're switching to this MSD 6 off-road, which is basically a typical 6AL box, except it's weatherproof. Um, it's got all weatherproof connections on the wiring harness, and the box itself is weatherproof, so you don't have to worry about having issues with impact or even getting water inside. So I just need to get this thing installed and wired up, and we can move on. Another advantage to switching to a digital six or this six off road is the fact that the wiring harness is not integrated into the box, it plugs in. And like I mentioned before, everything's weatherproof. So all these connections are weather packs, uh, which leads me to my next point, which is our pickup that connects to our distributor has a weather pack on it and our, our pro billet does not have that. So we're gonna have to adapt that. But first I'm gonna get this wire plugged in and uh, start making some connections. Could just go straight to the battery with these at this point. Since we've already made a spaghetti factory out of the wiring, we're just gonna go ahead and connect these wires using some good old fashioned butt connectors. Next, we'll install a weather pack on the pigtail of our distributor and connect it to the existing weather pack on the new harness. That way, we can submerge this thing. In theory, of course. This gray wire's the tax signal. Well, our ignition box is all wired in. All that we have left is to program the box itself, but we'll get that done once we get everything finished up and uh, connect the battery. All right, now that Mark's out of my way, I can go ahead and start installing this snorkel. Uh, we actually got this from Summit Racing. It's for a Land Cruiser, because we couldn't find a uh, snorkel for a square body, but this looks like it'll work pretty good. I just gotta make sure that it's not gonna hit the door when we go to open it. Mark it and start drilling holes. I don't know if we'll be able to get all these mounting holes to work with us. There's no better feeling than taking a good panel and drilling a large hole in it. Next, I'll drill the mounting holes and then chop the inside of the fender out for the snorkel tube. A little blue Loctite on the studs, and we're ready. Oh. 
Well, that actually wasn't that hard. Let's see what it looks like. Well, it fits the body line of the fender pretty well, but I think it needs to go further in on this A-pillar. It looks a little funky sitting out there, so maybe heat gun this corner and lay it over. Looks like our situation is starting to heat up. Well, I just made this little bracket here to hold the snorkel to the A-pillar, and it's actually pretty sturdy. So the last thing we need to do is put the cherry on top and then plumb this thing into the throttle body. Now I'm getting excited. Put this hose on. Be done. <laughs> that looks good. Well, Brandon, it's time. This is the best part of the build. Yeah, the end. <laughs> Let's get this thing loaded up and go get it dirty. Coming up next, we're riding high at AOP. This is it, taking it back to AOP. Yeah, you know, I didn't think we'd be able to come back here again, but I can't wait to get back out here and see what this thing can do the way oh, it is yeah. now. Especially since we're going in the mud this time. <laughs> That's where I like to go. Oh, yeah. Well, we are back here at Adventure Off-Road Park in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. And this is what we built it for. Right. The Suburban's gonna go through the mud this time. I know we didn't really play last time, so. No, I mean, we, we kind of put a hurting on it before we did that. Yeah. <laughs> So but we reserved everything it's, for the mud today. It's fixed? Yeah. And we're gonna have some fun. Let's do it. Go right there. Oh yeah. It's a little deep, slightly deeper than I thought it was. Well, as you can see, the 42 inch TSLs are under the water. So it's deeper than that. Oh, oh yeah, it's pretty stuck. Oh. That's, that's what this thing was built for, right? Oh yeah. I'm standing on hard ground <laughs> and the bumper, which is normally here. Yeah. Hooking up a strap to the rear bumper. Now, some people might see this as a failure. But we say, if you ain't getting stuck, you ain't having fun. Zigzag the wheel. Come on! Come on, keep going! It still runs and drives, so I guess I guess we'd do that some more. Suburban, 30 foot. Yeah, like you can see from here. <laughs> All the way to there. Right there. Wow. That's awesome. 
Don't do it again! been one of those projects that, like most, is always evolving. This thing has climbed the mountain, and now it has tackled the mud. What a great day. 